thank you. I, I, it's hard to go after that speech that I just had, so hopefully I can do justice. Uh, I want to thank you to the committee and all those that worked to put this night together. I'm honored and humbled to be selected into the Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations to all of the honorees tonight and for all those that have been selected in the past. It is a special honor to join so many individuals that I have the utmost respect and admiration for. I am a product of so many that are here tonight and I extend my sincerest gratitude to all the family, friends, colleagues, and coaches that are here tonight. I truly appreciate you being here and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Coaching for 23 years was an incredible gift. Working at Bristol Eastern gave me the opportunity to work with supportive coaching assistants like Jessica Sanzo, Jamie De Silva, Jenna Rajensky, Kelly Violet, Kelly LeBeau, and Stephanie Rie. Their hard work and commitment to our program was vital to our success as a team. I was fortunate to have a dedicated trainer in Jared Yeager. He took care of my players with vigilance and care. John Stevens worked tirelessly to help our program run smoothly. His time and service was paramount, and his support of the student-athletes was unwavering. I also had the pleasure of surrounding myself with lifelong coaches at Bristol Eastern, who, like myself, have devoted themselves to this profession, many of which are here in this room tonight. To Gail Erickson, I want to say thank you. Thank you for laying such a strong foundation for the Bristol Eastern Volleyball Program to be built upon. You gave me the opportunity to coach and work alongside you. I appreciate you giving me the chance to do something I truly love to do in a building that I felt such a strong connection to with athletes that I found to be hardworking, gritty, and athletic in a program where success and dedication were synonymous. To Coach Floyd and Mr. Chauvin, my high school basketball and tennis coaches, thank you for being positive role models. Each of you had your own style, yet both of you displayed the commitment, drive, and devotion to your athletes as well as your craft that I too wanted to emulate for my athletes. Mom, who's not here physically, but I know is here with me, and Dad, thank you. No words would be sufficient enough to thank you for guiding me to become who I am today. You both epitomized what hard work, sacrifice, and integrity stand for. You helped shape my core beliefs about responsibility, respect, and commitment. And I am very proud to be a reflection of the both of you. Thank you to my brother, Michael, who constantly amazes me with his incredible intelligence and independence. And to my brother, Stephen, and sister-in-law, Melanie. You and your four incredible daughters, Abby, Reagan, Riley, and Molly, are examples of great love, kindness, and endless support. To my husband, Steve, you are the reason I'm standing up here today. Without you, coaching would not have been possible. With three small children at home, you became Mr. Mom. You carpooled, coordinated play dates, cooked dinner, all while being my biggest fan and supporter. You held our beautiful family together so I could pursue my love of coaching, even when that meant being away from home and spending hours and hours with my volleyball and school families instead. You were my sounding board, my statistician, my tournament calculating, my referee yelling, my always questioning my devil's advocate, my team loving number one fan. I share this honor with you and thank you for always believing in me. To my pride and joys, Emily, Aliana, and Carson, the three of you make being your mom my proudest lifetime achievement of all. I love you all very much. And lastly, I want to thank you, say thank you to the game of volleyball 
You introduced me to some of my fiercest and respected competitors and friends, coaches like Tim, Laura, Rich, Victor, and Lori. All of you inspired me, guided me, and drove me to want to be better. When I walked into a gym against one of your teams, I wanted nothing more than to beat you. And yet, when the game was done, we would hug, shake hands, and walk away knowing that both teams gave everything they had. I learned so much from watching and talking to all of you. The very best and worst of Bristol Eastern's wins and losses were against the teams that you coached. Thank you for raising the bar and being the very best. To all of the athletes I had the pleasure of coaching, you are what drove me to succeed. I took my responsibilities as a coach very seriously, and when I made mistakes, I always tried to do what was best, and while I made mistakes, I always tried to do what was best for the team. Making difficult decisions and putting the team first is part of a coach's job. Yes, many of you challenged, disagreed, and even rebelled against the decisions I made over the years. And while I will own up to those mistakes, what I will never do is apologize for holding my players accountable to high standards and stretching them to reach their fullest potential. A potential most never knew they were capable of reaching. My job was to help players understand that being committed to something greater than themselves can be motivating and powerful. My job was to create players to help my players understand that a commitment to winning also meant a commitment to the work that winning requires. My job was to create a standard of excellence where there were no excuses. Either you do everything you can to make it happen, or you don't. So many coaches are far more knowledgeable about the game itself and its inner strategies of gameplay. For me, my strength was in the planning and preparation. When I would sit at night for hours strategically planning out my practices, I would keep these guiding principles in the forefront of my mind. Number one, there are no little things. Number two, I am the coach. If my players are not doing it, I need to look to myself. What gets attention gets fixed. Number three, we will get good at what we spend time practicing. And number four, we must practice the game in the manner in which it is played. Raise the level of play and practice, and the players will learn how to respond in a game. I read a quote once that said, players think, play me and I'll show you. Coaches think, show me and I'll play you. What happened in practice was important, and I valued that time I spent with my teams. It was during practice that I could, like so many coaches out there, tell who the great players were by their reaction and response to being pushed in practice. I was fortunate to work with so many players of this caliber over my 14 years as head coach at Bristol Eastern. Players that consistently displayed a high level of discipline self-motivation, passion, and tenacity. It was such an honor and privilege to be around athletes that mirrored my drive and competitiveness. Players who refused to be easily beaten and hated to lose. Being successful is hard work. It means showing up and grinding it out even when you don't feel like it. My most successful teams were made of athletes that understood and bought into the expectations that were set for them. They held each other accountable and trusted the process that pushed them to do better, even when they felt like they were doing their very best. I would like to think that my teams were successful, not because of the incredibly talented and athletic players I had, but because of the championship culture that was instilled in my teams at practice first. I took great pride in my preparation and wanted to make the most of the time I had with my athletes. I wanted my teams to be able to respond to adversity with unwavering calm, confidence, and focus 
when it meant the most. I wanted my teams to compete at the highest level during the most difficult times, and time after time, they did. The greatest compliments I ever received were in response to my team's level of grit, intensity, and competitiveness when playing the very best teams in the state. Successes, especially championships, don't just happen. Success requires a group of people being dedicated to bringing out the best in others, no matter what it takes. The championships were highlights of a few teams' success, but most years' success was measured by a different standard. The wins and losses only represented our success in numbers, but I measured true success by the overall growth and potential reached by my athletes and the teams they represented. I often told my athletes that it's not where you start, but where you finish that matters. My goal was to always make my players better and challenge them to improve. I'd like to think that I accomplished that goal. I hope that whatever the record or title my teams earned over the years, that they know how much I cared about them. I hope they learned important life lessons they still carry with them throughout their lives. I love the relationships that I form with my athletes and the time I spent representing all that Bristol Eastern Volleyball stands for. And to Aliana, thank you for letting me coach you. It's not easy being a coach's child, and yet you carried yourself with grace and dignity even when others chose a different path. You rose above and excelled and rightfully earned every accolade you received. I'm incredibly proud to have been your coach and to have been a part of the Bristol Eastern family. Thank you.